So there we have it. Wow. My first time talking in three days. Um, wow, it looks like I've grown quite a beard here too. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm literally in the middle of uh, nowhere. Um, I took like a five hour bus from Busan to Jungju in like a $45 cab ride to this place in the middle of the wilderness. Um, basically, <laughs> it was just three days of being in that little room uh, meditating from four in the morning till about 9.30 at night. And uh, it was really, really difficult. <laughs> Um, I did the 10-day 10, 10 meditation Vipassana before. This one was only three days. Um, but the one that I did before was in 2008. So, it's a long time ago. Um, and one of the hardest things back then is I didn't have a smartphone or a cell phone, I don't think. I had a cell phone, but one of those old school ones. So technology, you weren't so used to having it part of your, you know, daily life. So I was fine with not talking, actually. Like, the not talking was really easy for me. But what was difficult was, like, not having some kind of stimulation from, like, a phone or a computer or reading a book. So there's no reading, no writing. Um, so that was really the, the most challenging thing, as well as the chanting. And I, I forgot, like, the last time I did it, there was um, not as much, like, audio chanting. It was more just silence. But here it was just, like, the chanting really, really was... Uh, unenchanting part of it for me. Um, so that was difficult. The waking up at 4 a.m. was surprisingly easy um, and refreshing. But I really did not like, like the chanting. Um, the one thing I did like was they had like a, a lesson on the art of living and it was really interesting because the, the teacher guru Indian guy um, <coughs> was talking all about, like, um, uh, basically there's only two emotions in life, and that is craving and averting, or avoiding. So you're either craving some kind of pleasure experience, or you're avoiding some kind of painful experience. And he was saying that if you just acknowledge it, it all passes. Even if you get that satisfaction, it will go. Even if you have that painful experience, it will pass. So we just talked about not being so involved in, uh, in the day-to-day -day stuff that comes up in your life, which I think is really, really a good, a good tip. Um, so that was a good takeaway. As well as I'm going to start trying to unplug from technology, like one day a week, just where I leave my phone at home or don't even turn it on and just come out to places like in nature because I feel really just a lot more grounded and restful uh, after doing this. And I think that we're just bombarded by constantly being on at all times, getting, you know, text messages, Facebook messages, tech, you know, Skype, all that stuff. So I think we really need more now more than ever an opportunity like this to uh, unplug. One of my coworkers just told me about an app called Unplug or something like that, um, where it actually tracks how often you are on your phone. And I'm gonna I'm gonna download that. Um, but anybody else that's interested in doing something like this, like I highly highly uh, recommend it. Um, I'm all about personal development, and I've done a lot of conferences and retreats and stuff like that. So I think it's important to kind of challenge yourself and and learn and grow and get out of your comfort zone. And I was definitely out of mind this week. Um, so, I was going to say one more thing. Yeah, I realized, I was having lunch with my coworker. Brandon was saying, after the retreat, you'll probably want to talk a lot. And it's actually the opposite reaction. You actually don't want to talk at all. Um, after I did my 10-day retreat in silence before, it took me like a couple weeks to kind of get back into normal <laughs> communication patterns. Um... And you just realize that you don't really need to say a lot. And people often talk just for the sake of talking and not saying anything. So 
I'm naturally kind of an introvert. Like, I need my own space, but also when I go out, I'm kind of like really, really, people think I'm extroverted because I am usually like the life of the party or really like social. But I need my time alone. Um, and I'm just seeing now that I'm more introverted than extroverted. But yeah, I challenge anybody that wants to do this, go for it. Take a, a weekend retreat, even if it's not doing something like this, just rent a cabin and go out into the woods. I think that's what I would do next time. Um, I wouldn't necessarily come back to this retreat, personally. Um, I'll tell you maybe why in a moment. But uh, you can do this exact same thing by just leaving your phone at home, renting a cabin out in the woods, and just going. And um, yeah, it's as easy as that. That's what I would do next time. Personally, for me, the reason why I wouldn't really come back to this retreat was they say it's non-denominational. Um, and that's what I liked about it. But I really did get a lot of Indian influence, um, and Buddha's influence. And during that sermon or teaching session, they really actually called down the church. They called it a sect and really kind of made some negative um, condesc condescending remarks about organized religion. And myself, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. So that really didn't resonate too well with me. And the other thing is that they make you kind of do chanting here in kind of like an Indian language. And a few years ago, I met the abbot. And if you don't know what, who the abbot is, the abbot is like just right below the Pope. And I went to a retreat, a silent retreat with him and um, in Canada. And he was saying that you have to be aware of the unconscious things that you say. Like if you go to another country and you're like, chanting in their language you don't know what they're saying you know so you always have to be aware of um, the content of what you're putting in your minds and verbalizing so that's one thing I'm always aware of after hearing that um, just to understand fully the uh, the entities that are being uh, I guess worshipped or, or praised because um, you know it might not be in alignment with your values or beliefs so that's just something to always keep in mind when you are doing retreats like this but other than that, I uh, enjoyed my weekend, um, and I'd recommend people to unplug and do something similar. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I've been getting some messages from people that are interested in doing it, um, but want to learn more, and that's kind of why I shot this video, to kind of give you a glimpse of what it's like. And I was by far the youngest, um, the youngest person. They have women on that side, men on this side, and uh, there's me and only two other foreigners. There's about... 17 women I counted and about 11 men um, so yeah it was just nice being out in this nature too fresh air funny enough there's like a church right there <laughs> so peace I'm gonna go back to not talking for a while